Hi guys! In this video, I'll be showing you what honeypots are, how honeypots work, and how you can spot and stay away from them. So let's get started. Honeypots are setups where buyers can just buy tokens but cannot sell them. In a honeypot scam, the token smart contract is set up in a way that restricts anyone other than the scammer from selling. Anyone can buy, but only the scammer can sell. So if you buy honeypot tokens, you cannot sell them to recover your funds or to realize a profit. Honeypots are very widespread, so you would be wise to be across these. In 2022 alone, there were over 98,000 honeypots deployed, making them one of the most common forms of crypto scams. There have also been several high-profile examples of crypto honeypot scams, the most famous being the Squid Game token. This was a classic example of a honeypot scam where buyers could purchase the token but were not able to sell it, resulting in a loss of their investment. The scammers made off with $5.7 million before the scam was discovered. But how can scammers stop you from selling, you may ask? Well, a number of ways. They can explicitly code into the smart contract that no one other than the scammer is allowed to sell. They can disable the sell function altogether. Or they can increase the sell taxes to large amounts so they get a large portion of your proceeds when you try to sell your tokens. For instance, if you try to sell your token for $100, they could get $99.9 .9 and you could get only 10 cents. I am now going to illustrate how honeypots work in detail by showing you an example of how investors can fall into a honeypot scam and how the scammers benefit from leaving the investors out of pocket. Bear with me for a second, it looks a bit detailed, but I promise it is very easy to follow. Let's say you see a shiny token or coin being promoted as the next going to the moon token. As you know after watching our first video, that the token can only exist once the developer has deployed a smart contract. No smart contract equals to no token. So the scam developer codes some honeypot code into the token smart contract and deploys it onto the blockchain. This creates a supply of honeypot tokens available for purchase. Initially, when the developer deploys the smart contract, these scam tokens are available only in his wallet, so no one else can buy them yet. To enable people to buy his honeypot tokens, the scammer moves, say, 10 of his scam tokens from his wallet to a decentralized exchange. This is what we call a DEX. Think of a DEX as a marketplace where people come to buy tokens. Some examples are SushiSwap, Uniswap, and PancakeSwap. The process of supplying tokens to a DEX is called providing liquidity. These scam tokens go into a trading pool called the liquidity pool from where people can buy and sell them. The developer also sets the price of the token. Don't worry too much about specifics on how liquidity pools work for now. I will cover this in a separate video later down the series. Once the scammer has moved his scam tokens into a DEX, the scammer then goes on elaborate marketing exercises and gets some people to start buying. Soon, investors start buying. Investor 1, we'll call him Joe, trades in 1 Ether for 3 scam tokens. He doesn't know that they are a honeypot scam. So at this stage, the liquidity pool has one additional ETH and seven scam tokens. Joe has three scam tokens. Now let's say another investor comes in and buys another three scam tokens for another one ETH. So now the liquidity pool has two additional ETH and only four scam tokens left. 
Now, as the supply of tokens start to reduce in the liquidity pool, the price of the scam token will start to go up. This is just the way the liquidity pool is managed by the exchange. I will explain this in detail in a later video, so don't worry about it in too much detail for now. Just know that as the supply becomes scarce, the token price goes up. Seeing this price rise, Joe decides that he wants to sell his tokens for a profit. So he goes back to the DEX, connects his wallet, and hits swap. Unfortunately, he repeatedly gets an error. It generally says something like contract failed, exceeded allowance, etc. etc. The same thing happens to Jill. At this point, investors realize that they cannot sell their tokens. What is actually happening in the background is that SushiSwap is calling the transfer from function from the token smart contract to transfer the tokens from Joe's wallet back to the liquidity pool so Joe can then receive some ether. However, the contract owner, who is the scam developer, has hard-coded into the smart contract that this transfer from function can only be executed by himself or a select group of wallets. Joe's wallet is not part of that select group. So the contract does not execute the transfer from function and Joe keeps getting a contract error. Same for Jill. So now we are in a situation where both Joe and Jill cannot sell their scam tokens. They are stuck in this honeypot. To the outside world, it seems that the price is rapidly increasing as new buyers keep buying putting upward pressure on the price, but no one can sell, so there is no downward forces keeping the prices in check. Meanwhile, the liquidity pool keeps filling up with valuable ether as more innocent investors swap the ether to get hold of the scam token. From this point, the scammers can use a few tactics to drain investors' money. Number one, Remember how they whitelisted their own wallet addresses to be able to sell the scam tokens? Well now, they can connect their wallets to SushiSwap and will be able to swap their tokens for Ether. The code which has whitelisted their wallets will now run as their wallet addresses match the authorized list. The scammers will already have a large supply of the scam tokens as they received that when they deployed the token smart contract. So they can keep draining the liquidity pool of valuable tokens for as long as they want and refill it with more scam tokens for new investors to buy. The scammer can pull out the liquidity pool altogether and take off with all the valuable tokens in the liquidity pool. When the scammer first provided liquidity, the DEX gave him liquidity pool tokens. Think of these as certificates of deposit. The scammer can exchange these liquidity pool tokens back anytime to claim the liquidity pool from the DEX. This means that by just supplying the liquidity pool tokens back to the DEX, they can access and take off with the entire liquidity pool and all the tokens in it, including Joe and Jill's ethers. At this point, with no liquidity pool available, the DEX will stop all trading of this token and the token price will crash as it no longer has any value. This is called a rug pull. It is important to note that honeypots are different to rug pulls. They are used quite interchangeably at times, but please bear in mind that there are significant differences between the two. If you're interested, please drop me a comment and I can make a video explaining the differences between how these two schemes work. So as you can see, recovering your assets from a honeypot is very difficult. In the very rare chance that this becomes possible, either through the scammer making a mistake or leaving an exploit, it requires a great deal of expertise, 
coding and patience. This is the work of the top blockchain experts. And these people are very busy and well sought after. Not to mention highly paid, so they won't contact anyone in an unsolicited manner offering help. They are not going to drop anyone a direct message offering help either. Only other scammers pretending to know how to recover lost funds will do that. So please don't trust anyone who sends you an unsolicited offer to help. Also, I see a lot of people posting on forums asking for help recovering their crypto. Forums are just hunting grounds for scammers, so please don't do that. The best thing you can do if you have been a victim of a honeypot scam is to report it to relevant authorities and well-reputed sites so they become aware of these and issue warnings to others. But the best thing is to avoid honeypot scams altogether. Which brings us to our next section. The good news is that you can get honeypot scam warnings straight from the contract scanning tools we highlighted in the first video of the series. So if you haven't watched that video yet, please go check it out. It will really help you understand some of the tools we mentioned from this point on. Token Sniffer will show this under Swap Analysis as token is sellable. BS Check will highlight the box in red. At this point, you should know what honeypots are, how honeypots work, and how you can spot them. So if you're still liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. As a new channel, it really helps us out. Thanks guys. I am going to use a recent honeypot highlighted by a reputed agency as an example of what you need to look for to identify a honeypot. Let's go to token sniffer for this and paste the contract address. Let's go through the results from token sniffer in our next video where I will also be introducing you to a new very useful tool you can use to screen honeypot tokens. We will go through a live honeypot example and the red flags you need to look for in honeypot tokens so you know how to spot them in case they are not covered by token sniffer or BS check. If you would like to know when we release our next video, please hit the subscribe and bell button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Those were our token bites for today guys. Take care. See you next time.